and welcome to the Fast Girl Speaks. <gasps> Today is Monday, April 6th, April, right? August, it's an A month, right? Hmm. August 6th, <laughs> this is episode 24. I am Amy Beth, also known as the Fast Squirrel. You can find me on Ravelry and Plurk if you like to me up or friend me or whatever. Oh my gosh, look. Okay, so I apologize to the viewers for last week's crazy rant on me worrying about my kid going to school. I'm sorry, that was probably way too much information for y'all, and I am apolog I do apologize for getting a little crazy on that one. But let me just say, I love all your faces. I am not even kidding. I'm not. I'm a funny girl, but sometimes I'm serious. I seriously love your faces. Instead of being like, you are crazy. Everybody goes through this. You need to get over it and move on. Which is <laughs> probably what some of you were thinking. Thank thinking. Thank you for not saying it. Because that was nice of you. <laughs> you can totally think it though. Um But so many of you wrote such nice supportive things and gave me great ideas and perspective. And I again, there's this funny thing that happens when you sit and talk at a computer. <laughs> Sometimes your internal editor somehow thinks you're just talking to yourself because you are. And so sometimes she takes a nap. <laughs> so evidently she was taking a nap and like I had lost my perspective for the moment. She was not all up like, mm hmm you need to settle down. She was all, mm hmm she's just talking to herself again. Oh yeah, she likes to do that. She's crazy. She needs a memo. This is, this is internal editor time. Come on, girl. Come on. So anyway, so I do really appreciate you not only not writing me nasty letters, but so many of you said such kind things and were so supportive and so lovely. And thank you all so very much. If you have a new child starting school or a child starting a new school, there's lots of beautiful information on the Ravelry boards. There's a thread that specifically is about if you have a kid getting into kindergarten or if you look at the last episode 23, which was called Back to School Ball. Awesome. Um, there's lots of good information there. I will just tell you right now, you know, TMI. <laughs> what we did is what we decided to do. Kissing hand. Normally I'm a cheapo McCheaper pants and I would have just gotten this from the library, but obviously the library only has like five copies and there were at least five other brilliant parents out there <laughs> who knew about this at a time. Or teachers, maybe even. So we did buy the book, which I'm glad we did. I'm glad my super cheapo self actually bought it because now it'll be like a keepsake, okay? So if you've not read this book, sorry if you don't have children, just be very informed when your other friends ask you questions. Be like, oh, I totally heard about this book called Kissing Him. They'll be like, you don't even have kids. And they're like, yes, I'm just a genius. Okay. So that's how you should play that. Just listen for a second. So it has very cute illustrations. They are watercolors and they like the texture of the watercolor paper comes through. Isn't that cute? So anyway, I was a little concerned because my kid is kind of, I was afraid she would think this was like too quiet and cute. Cause she's more like tearing it up ninja style. So I was a little concerned that she might think this was annoying, but that I figured she would just go with it because mommy wanted her to, you know, she's a good kid, but she really actually did enjoy it and requested it all three nights in a row. Okay, just that. And then today, heart hands. So she, I drew a heart on her hand and she drew one on my hand. So we didn't actually send her with any objects because I had advice from, um, both kinds of people. Both said, oh, it's fine. You can put a little something in their pocket and then other teachers, and sometimes and the teachers were like, that's probably not the best idea because it can be very distracting. And I was like, you know what? You're absolutely correct. My child, distract your pants. Because not only that, I was also afraid she has a very good tendency. She has lots of tiny stuffed animals. And if she misplaces one, she loses it. So I was all imagining like her having her little heart and being like all comforted by it and then going out in the playground and coming back in and going to touch it and by being there and her losing her stuff. So <laughs> with this, but there are lots of great ideas if your kid's not like mine and could actually hold on to something. Somebody did this for their kid and gave them a little heart and they kept it for their whole, their whole personhood. I love that person and her kid. And give your kid a hug, who is now a teenager. But he has his little heart thing that his mommy gave him on his first day of school. Oh my gosh, my hair is a hot mess. I'm sorry. Yeah! Okay, so that was so much thanks. And then let me just say, 
cavalcade of thanks, people. Cavalcade. It has been a very stressful week. I apologize. I have not been on the boards as much as I usually am. And I have really not responded to email because I am a bad person. But uh, I haven't. So, period. Moving on. But cavalcade of thank yous! So not only are you all so nice about my kid going to school and not calling me a big spaz face out loud, um, there was gifts. Okay. Okay, so let me just say, the first gifts is, is you have to go to the blog, www.fastgirl.com. It'll be under this episode that you're watching right now, so you have to just roll down a little bit. You will see my face photoshopped into a prairie woman dress in a dying room at Connor Prairie. I kid you not. Julie B, I kiss your face. It made me laugh so hard. You should all go look at it if you haven't already because it'll make you laugh so hard. Really, I should stop the show right now because I will have given you your laugh. Done. Okay, the rest of the show can be totally bleh. You got your laugh in. Okay, so, oh yeah, go, I kiss her face. It's so awesome. Okay. Then Kate, actually the day before, Kate, Kate had sent me an email because I was talking about my kid likes to play with marbles. Kate sent me this lovely little email that was like, I have all these marbles and I was collecting them and putting them in a jar. This is not Kate's voice, this is my voice. I was putting them in a jar and I was going to display it because it's really pretty. But then I was all like, hmm, no, these should really go to somebody who can play with them. Kate, I hope you're not offended by that voice. I know that's not your voice. That's my internal monologue voice. Um, so if you want me to tell you to send them to you for your kid to play with. And I was like, oh, it's just so nice. I can't believe you do that because I'm sure marbles cost a billion dollars to send. So, oh, yes, that would be beautiful. Thank you so much. So she sent them. And let me just discuss. My child play with them forever. Marble mania up in y'all. So not only did my kid get so excited, and by the way, she's just, she's having that total like megalo, like breakdown where she was, after she had the initial joy of like ripping out the stuffingses and just being like, <sighs> then she just kept looking at them all and saying to me, I can't believe this lady who does not know me is so nice. <laughs> right? I say it all the time in my head. But I should say it out more loud, loud, out loud more. Cause it's so true. So yeah, she just kept saying, I just, and she said it multiple times. I just can't believe this lady that doesn't know me is so nice. I say that about all of you right now, officially. Can't believe these ladies and few gentlemen who don't know me are so nice. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna well on camera because it's embarrassing and I've always embarrassed myself enough for this one. But then Kate included goodness for me in the package. shelf niceness Shush. okay so could you could you tell i'm hesitant to even show you because i'm gonna look like the most luckiest pants in the world and you're all like mm. <laughs> i don't care <sighs> okay ah, da, da, da. of course the beautiful lollipop yarns she said she couldn't find the, color, the tag but she wrote it on the letter so she's like, mm. girly girl my daughter was like, oh, look, somebody sent you another prize to give away. I was like, I didn't get to keep this one. And she was like, no. <laughs> well, of course, it's all squishy. Oh, my God, Kate, I kiss your face. It's so coveted. Oh, look, it matches my heart. Hmm. I bet if I made this shortish socks, I could. Okay, I'm not going to think about that. I'm all like trying to think, like, maybe I could make my kid a pair of socks and my kid. Shush my brain. And then! So I don't know if you're out of the loop or what, but in case you're out of the loop, Single Handed Knits is totally doing a sock the vote knit along. What you say? Yes, I say. So for you out of countryers, our uh, fall elections are coming up and it's always a big shadoo. People get really angsty and on edge. And there's a lot of so her idea was to do a sock the vote and have it pretendo politico like the parties are going to be toe up, cuff down um, green party and undecided 
but no actual political talkie talk talks. Your only talkie talks can be like, toe up is bummer or whatever. It can't be actually like, mm. so it's just fun smack talk. Yay. Um, so <laughs> thanks to Kate, I can totally join the green party. <laughs> String theory, hand dyed yarn. Shut your faces. Caper sock, 80% murmur, murmur. Superwash Merino, 20% nylon. I mean, 10% cashmere. 10% nylon. This is the only cashmere sock I've ever had. It is so green and so happy and so we're going to be in the knit along. Okay. So if you don't know what that is, I'll totally put a linky down there to the Snake Head and its podcast. She always podcasts from outside in Hawaii. It's totally worth watching it just for that, yo. It's all pretty. Although it might make, make you a little jealous of her. That's okay. Just be jealous in a nice way. Um, is it so pretty? Um, burr, 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 burr. Oh, so I'm, you can also vote for me. Who's having a podcaster poll? See which podcaster gets voted to be part of it. So if you want to vote for me, you can do that. No pressure. Won't get back to me if you didn't. Okay, so I've only ever campaigned for one other political office in my life. When I was in college, um, I went to a very old college and all the housing was very old. And we all had fireplaces in our living areas, dorms, whatever you want to call them. They were actually just really old houses that had been converted into dorms. So they all had fireplaces. So my only campaigning in my whole life was for fire captain. Because <laughs> I really wanted to be in charge of making the fires. <laughs> and my whole campaign was... Vote for me, I have fire hair. <laughs> so I don't think that'll work here. My phone's ringing. Sorry, kids. Um, I don't think that'll really work here, but we'll try. Well, no, we won't try. That doesn't make any sense. The phone distracted me. Uh, so that's really been my only experience, but you know. Uh, vote for me. Or not. I'm totally going to play anyway. Green party. So sorry, that's loud and talking. I'm going to try to talk over it so you don't have to hear anything. And hopefully nobody's leaving you a message like, we hate you. Because that would be embarrassing. <laughs> oh, man, what the stink? What the stink? Oh, yeah, you know what it is. You can tell, can't you? I, didn't, I don't have to show you that. You totally know what it is. Look at this little... There could secretly be like an angry fire gnome down here. You would never know. At least it's not. <laughs> so let me just discuss. This has been my spinning this week. Look, you're like, that looks surprisingly similar to your spinning last week. That's because it is. Last week there were 16 ounces. This week there are 12 ounces. So let me just discuss. So ready for the crazy. I'm on board. This is next thing on the needles. Or the, the needle. <laughs> ah, it's okay. Shut up, look at your face. Oh wait. Oh wait. All right. I'm Corey. Look, do you see that? I was all like in my house knitting, watching Midsummer Murders, trying to zen out. At the door, and I'm like, "What? That was that? Oh my gosh! So cute. Thank you, Corey. Oh my gosh! Now that you're all so sick of me, I'm so sorry, but I can't help it. I could always all like thinking, maybe I should just not say anything on air and just send them the thank yous in private. But I'm so excited to have to share with you all, because guess what this means." This means there are such nice people in the world. There are, I mean, I knew that already because all of you on the boards are so nice and cute and sweet and I love your faces. I'm telling you, Paula, of prairie piperness, of knitting pipelineiness, it's a kindness of knitters. It's so true. That's all there's to it. Lots of that though. <laughs> so I'm so excited for flamey greenness. Oh my gosh! I guess I should just maybe I should talk about knitting. Maybe just a little bit. Hmm. I guess I'm totally wearing a finished object. You can't see it because I am too monumentally awesome to fit on the screen. 
But I have finished my Abigail Cardi by Cecily Glauick McDonald, knit out of Quince and Company Sparrow in the Juniper colorway. Okay. You can see it's, you can see, oh, see, that's my tank top. So you can see it's very open weave, very breezy. I'm using a little doohickey to keep it closed while I'm doing the podcast, especially because I don't want to keep fiddling with it because that's uber distracting. I'm relatively pleased with it. I feel like for my first linen project, totally fine. It's very deconstructed and stuff. Oh, I did the uh, modifications I did is I did do, uh, did not do the reverse stock in it. I did the regular stock in it and I did not do ribbing. I did mossy stitch. Oh, you'll see too. You can see that. Um, last week I had moss stitch on the collar. I totally ripped that all out because it just looked ridiculous. I went ahead and just went with a stock in it and it does roll, but not, I was afraid it was going to really roll, but it totally works with the linen because it's all just soft like this this pink heart on my hand is very distracting to you I am so sorry um so that's finished object works in progress of course like all sane people I'm totally working on the My Hope Shawl by Laura Lenneman sorry it's a uh, wonky I may have spilt water in my bag. <laughs> so it has had further progress. Yo, I am done with the second twisted stitchy doo doo da repeat. Do you like it? Is it so crazy? But perfect for those crazy pants yarns that you don't know what else to do with. <laughs> <laughs> this is technically a sport weight yarn. It's called Interlacements Irish Jig in the Canyon Lands Plus colorway. And I'm knitting it on US 5s. Whoops, I'm almost unknitting it on US 5s. Um, burnt. So I totally had this realization this week. Oh, and if, you're, if you've ever done the Twisted Stitch before and it drove you berserker like it does me, I did put out on the Laura Lennon, on her Lala Knits group, I did put out what I do. Um, I hold a big old fat size 15 um, interchangeable circular needle double, double point, but you know, the tip without the cable attached. Oh, like this one. I hold it actually with my needle and, and I don't wrap the stitches. I just knit like this is one gigantor needle. Because I am not, I'm a super loose knitter, but for some reason those wrap stitches get so tangled up on me and it makes me nuts. I don't like it. Um, they get like all, they really, they get climbed over each other and then they're knotted and I get very angry and a little cursy. Just a little bit. So um, that works for me. I did put pictures over there if that, if you find those helpful just so you know it's there if you've ever done that before and had the similar experience where it made you stabby um you can go look at that and it might make you feel like oh maybe i can do that without wanting to murder innocent bystanders what else was I gonna say? oh pow, pow and then i remembered well i did not remember then i was confronted with the reality <laughs> that there's a beaded bind off and i had not made myself pay attention to that. Actually, I probably did notice it and then was just like, oh, I won't do that because I don't do that. Okay. But then Laura said something on the her show, her and Leslie show, the Nick girls. I believe she said it on there about how the beaded bind off does help because the last repeat is the, is the lacy hoo-ha. And if the beads help to keep that stretched out, which makes perfect sense, of course, why would you just put a beaded bind off in there for no good reason? So, Thank you. I did put an emergency poll up on the discussion boards to be like, oh my gosh, what do I do? And I put like three options up on beads. And I was like, burr, 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 help me choose. Uh, but that was great information because I did not know. Hey, if you've never done beads, FYI, the matte beads, which are so cool and fun, evidently they really don't show up. So I'm going to go for glossy, shiny beads, which freaked me out because it's already so busy. But it makes sense that if this is so busy, if I put a matte bead on there, it's really not going to show up. So thank you for all of your help and suggestions in that front. Much appreciated. Second work in progress. 
<clears throat> that giant ball of oh, natural colored apaca is making itself into a vest. And this is how much of it has made itself into the far with my assistance. So I am just using a basic pattern from the beautiful Knitter's Handy Book of Patterns by the beautiful Ann Bud. Oh wait, her name's not even on there on the front? Oh, there, it's on the very bottom. I was about to get all angry for her. <laughs> so I looked on Ravelry to find a pattern, but I just didn't see any that, there are not that many sweater vest patterns, which makes sense. It's kind of a weird genre, I guess. Um, so I didn't really find any that I was like, yes. So this is a perfect thing because it's like one of those beautiful adaptable where you just plug in your gauge and your measurements and it gives you the big chartsy zoozles. So, I mean, I could have just wung it, wung it. <laughs> that would be the past tense of winged it, wing it. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I thought, you know what? It's always good to have a framework to work in. That's especially since this is a timed thing. Um, oh, I did get an extension. It's no longer due on August 13th. It's now due on August 19th. Um, but I especially did not want to have to try to rip stuff out and be all kooky wooky. So I'm just doing it super Plano style. Probably like that green one there. Maybe some do a cable around the, <laughs> around the neckline. Although I don't think I will because quite frankly, this alpaca, it's not going to hold a cable and look good. So it's hard to be like, yes, this is the plainest thing on earth. But really for the yarn, I think it needs to be the plainest thing on earth because it just is alpaca. It's hundred percent alpaca. You can see it's kind of an opener. An opener, a more open, really. Lobotomy happened this way. It's a more open fabric, too. So a cable really pops better on a tight, more densely knitted fabric. So good progress on that. Um, I did the ribbing on twos, the body is on fours, and the yarn is DK-ish. I was so excited. Okay, you want to hear me geek out for just a second? or 40 minutes as the case may be. Um, <laughs> so I totally got all my yarn done and weighed it and measured it and all that good schnoogie schnoog. And then I was like, oh no, how consistent I was across these 16 plus 12, 28 ounces of yarn. Hmm. Plus or minus 4%, shut your face. Plus or minus 4%. Hmm. That's probably horrendous, but to me it sounded good for me. I'm not the greatest. Um, so I was very excited. Plus or minus 4%. My husband was like, what are you doing? Because I had like scratch paper and I was all doing crazy stuff on it. Just that movie. I was all goodwill hunting it. Because um, <laughs> I've actually never taken a statistics course. I have a degree in mathematics and I've never taken a statistics course. How impractical am I? 100%. Um, so I had to like make up how to do it, <laughs> which is fine. It works. Um, gosh. So I showed you all the cool stuff that was given to me because people are so nice. And then I got stuff too. I know, right? Glutton face. That's me. Full on. Okay. So if you don't know what's going on in our podcast, because you're a new viewer. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot to welcome you. Sorry. Thank you for returning viewers who are nice enough not to get upset with me that I forgot to welcome you back. Love your face. If you're a new viewer, la la la, what did I say? Oh! <laughs> we're doing a low cal, which is a knit along that we're doing with local fibers and okay? K. So it'll be running from September 1st until October 14th. And it could be anything that you would desire to knit. And it has to be made of local to you fibers, at least by country. Unless you're in a tiny country that produces no wool, and then you can go with neighbory. I won't judge. But if you're in the United States, don't pretend. I know better. I'll check it out. Um, so. This is the worst episode ever. I'm so sorry. So anyway, in an attempt to find local yarn for me, I totally went to the Sheep Street Studios in Morgantown, Indiana. It's just like a 45 minute drive for me. And they have sheep. They have 90 Shetland sheep and three boys. And one of them is named Lasagna. And I got to feed him a Triscuit. 
His wool was so creepy. <laughs> so I met the beautiful owner, whose name I now shoot. Jan or Pam or something. Oh my God, I'm such a terrible human being. Anyway, she's the owner of Sheep Shoot Fibers, and she's a beautiful human being, and she's an awesome pants. Um, but I met her, and she was so nice, and she showed me around, and she let me feed her sheep a trisket. So I love her. Um, she did not have any of her specific wool um, into millspun. They had run out. Because if you don't know this, when you go do millspun, you have to give them like 100 pounds of fleece to get any kind of decent pricing. And they, you know, so you can't just do it when you run out. Like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So... They had already run out of theirs for the year for this one. But then I got this, which is another local farm called Under the Sun Farm. And this is a regular Shetland sheep natural fiber. This is a sport weight, more it. And it's 200 yards. So they are out in Greencastle, which is about, it's not quite an hour west of me. It's where the fiber event is located. So I'm very excited about that. It's very springy. I'm very excited about how springy it is. I'm totally going to make like a cowl or something. Oh, I love it. And then, of course, because when you drive 45 minutes to go to a yarn store, you can't just buy one thing. Hi. Especially when the owners are super nice. Hi. And you might have to buy some of their sheep's hair. Maybe. You might have to. I mean, technically. Have to. Eating some of this week. <laughs> this is eight ounces of her Shetland sheepies. Died by her precious hands. Local yo. Hand dyed Shetland roping grown in on our farm in southern Indiana. Eight ounces for twenty-four dollars. It is so lovely. I'm not gonna untie it now because it will just be a horrendous mess, but it is super fall. Oh, that's better. That's a better capture. The bag is shining on you, but it is a super autumnal gasm, basically. Look, there's Cory's plant. Hi, made to Cory's plant. Um, so I'm so excited about that. I was so debating. She had a basket of well, she had lots of uh, roving, but she had a basket of like a fawn-colored combed top, which felt amazing. It was so luscious. And I really just, I was like, mm, 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 mm. it was such a hard decision, but I went with the color because I just came off that 28 ounces of natural and I was really feeling like I needed to look at some color, which might be why I'm doing that loop bed next. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> oh, so that's it. And I thought that would be great colors for the manly knits for Christmas gifts. Because it's getting close, people. It's August. Um, so I thought that would be perfect for the man hats and candy things. And then one completely disgusting purchase, which I did not need to make at all. This is the recycled sari silk, except it's been washed. And it is amazing. You cannot see the crack spun into yarn goodness from there. You really have to whip, but I mean, you can almost see it. You can like, you can 60% see how awesome it is. Oh, yes. Plus or minus 4%. Um, <laughs> it's so soft. And it's so awesome. It's bonkers. Bonkers. Anyway. <clears throat> Frabulous Fibers Recycled Silk Yarn. It is 100% silk. It's 160 to 180 yards. And it's 200 grams. And it knits up to be like a worsted. And it's hand spun. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see this. I would have bought seven of them. Thank goodness I did not read in the store. Hand spun by women's cooperatives from silk weaving, silk weaving something waste. It's, it's printed on like a weird fabric -y thing. How was that? I didn't even know that part. It's hand spun by women's cooperative. Shh. And it was like totally reasonable. $17.50. 
What? I can't even know. What? Oh my gosh, we're going to have to have like a women's. Oh my gosh, I'm totally getting distracted. I'm all like, we're going to have a women's cooperative cow. <laughs> Shut up. Okay. <laughs> So the locale also, oh, I forgot to mention this, um, Knit Psycho, the lovely Amanda, she also posted out there, which I did include on the front page of the local yarn info. Um, she found another great source. Guess what it's called? Local fibers dot, I wrote down dot com, but I'm pretty sure it's dot org. Try them both. I'm pretty sure it is dot org. Look, or go look at the board. Yo. Um, local fibers dot org. You can search by state or region. And you can find fiber festivals that way too, in case you're all like, where are the people hearing about these magical fiber festivals? Right there, people. Right there. It's a very handy dandy one all in one place resource. I'm, I've never heard of that before. Thank you, Amanda. Lots of you posting great information. I'm so excited for all of you. So many of you are like, I had no idea this farm was right down the road and they have yarn. Or like, I know this woman and I didn't even know she had sheep yarn. What? How awesome is that? <sighs> So that is going so well. I'm so proud of all of you. Give you love. <laughs> I'm so like, I, what are we doing here? I don't even know. Quite frankly, look, my hair tells you that. Um, I think that's all. We're going to pretend it is, even if it's not. So again, to sum up, kindness of knitters, you make me well up. So many kind things said. People sending gifts is. What? I'm going to have to do so much karmically to make up for all this goodness that is coming in. Whew. So, oh. I love your faces. I'm going to tell a little tiny story about dropping my kid off, which is not really a great story. I've not formed it well in my head yet. But in case you're interested in how it went, I'm going to tell you right now. So if you're not interested, I won't judge. Thank you for visiting. Hope you have a good week. If you're sticking around. <clears throat> so we went to my kids' open house on Sunday, ice cream social style. And um, it was very cute. Her school is very cute. It is a smallish school. There's like 350 kids in it, even though it's a big urban district. So it's totally not overwhelming. Kindergartners classes. I guess this makes sense that this is the truth in every school, which I just never thought about. But the kindergartners' classes are always like on the first floor and very close to the exits um, or the, the offices. So they're very easy for them to find. <clears throat> Brilliant people. Um, so we met her little teacher and she was very nice and very young. And my husband was like, she's like your age, right? I'm like, oh, honey, I love you. No, she's like eight to ten years younger than I am. <laughs> Maybe not quite that much, but at least eight. I'm like, oh, but that's so nice of you, honey. Hmm. <laughs> but anyway, she was very cute and very nice. And everybody, super smiley faces. Love that. Um, and I felt like a jerk because I was like, Ugh, what do we do? You know. Uh, but nobody made fun of me. So that was very nice of them. <laughs> so my daughter got to look at her classroom. And it's a monster classroom, so there's lots and lots of stuff. Like, not... And I don't mean that in like a ah, way. I mean, there's just lots of stuff that she's never seen. They have like lots of stations. There are no desks in the room. There are like, there are a few desks, but there aren't, there's not like a group of desks where the children sit and receive information. So going to work better for her. <laughs> so going to work better. Um, so they just have lots of different stations throughout the room where they can do different experiments and different things. And it's so exciting. So I took her this morning. So that was good. And she got to play on the playground, which was her number one request. <laughs> so this morning I took her to school for her first day. Um, I took her this morning, but she's riding the bus home. I'm so nervous. Okay, I'm not going to talk about it. Um, I sent her with a little tag with her bus number and where she lived in case she... I'm afraid she won't know where to get off the bus. Because they don't drop them off in front of my house. They drop her off down the street. And so we've gone over it a couple of times. Like, okay, if you see this building and me... Then they get off the bus. She asked me, okay, mama, will you just wear your normal clothes? <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> mama, don't wear the chicken suit tomorrow. <laughs> mama, could you just wear your normal clothes? Yes, I will wear my normal clothes. <laughs> and I told her I would bring Annie, our dog, with us. And she was like, oh, okay. Well, I'll recognize Annie. 
again. Hi, giant mama with giant red hair. Hello. <laughs> but she'll notice the eight pound dog that's close to the ground. <laughs> Whatever. If it makes her feel better, that's all that matters. <laughs> so, um, oh, so I took her a little early. We got to go see where they have breakfast and lunch. Oh, and because she's in an urban school district and they have a large percentage of kids who are on free and reduced lunch, they actually have a program there where the kids eat free for breakfast or lunch. So, um, oh, so I took her down and showed her where she could eat breakfast. She probably won't because she'll be too nervous, but she'll just eat at home. <laughs> but, um, so we took her down just so she could see what it looked like. And then she came back and we looked at her room and then it was getting kind of close. And like the other, there were a few other parents there dropping their kids off. And some kids were like, bye. And the teacher was like, do you want to give your parent a hug? And they were like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> and then there were the other kids who were like, you know, horrified, like, how dare you leave me here with strangers, which is what my kid was doing. <laughs> but I was so pleased because even though she did cry, she, when I actually removed her from my person and ran out the door, and you feel like such a bad person when you do that, but you gotta do it. Um, <laughs> you do feel like crud though. I'm like walking down the aisle, the hall to get to my car. My eyes are all red. And one of the teachers looked at me and I was like, I'm okay. I just got a deal. Um, but she was fine up until I left. So I was actually very pleased. I was afraid the whole morning was going to be chaos and tears. Totally fine until I left. So it went really well, way better than I could have hoped. Um, so I'm hoping that she has now stopped crying four hours later. I'm sure she has. Um, but yes, so it went well. Thank you for all of your well wishes. People even said to me that they were keeping me in their thoughts and Again, so full of thanks I am. I am so blessed with such nice people out there who I don't even know, but are kind and generous. And it's a lovely thing. So I am very appreciative and I hope you all feel it. I hope you have a lovely week and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.